Clampstar Flexible Suspension Clamp Hot Stick Installation. Clampstar Flexible units are sold with optional installation kits, which are basically eye bolts fitted with special collars to be used as hot stick clamping points. There is a threaded hole on the left and one on the right side of each CSF style clamp star to accept these installation kits, which should be removed after the unit is installed for reuse on future installations. It's important to note that due to the nature of the suspension clamp configurations, the clamp star will need to be mounted from the bottom of the conductor. Therefore, the eye bolt installation kits will need to be threaded onto the clamp star so that the hot sticks can be fastened from the bottom of the clamp star. Wearing the proper safety gear, move into position and install any necessary safety rubber in place. Then, as is required of any high integrity connector installation, prepare the conductor to receive the clamp star by scratch brushing to remove residue which has built up over time and to roughen the surface of the conductor. It may be easier to mount the brush on a 90 degree angle to allow easier access to the top side of the conductor, the most important surface. While the contact surface of the clamp star is provided with specially designed teeth to bite through surface contaminants and oxides, proper conductive preparation is always the practice of professional linemen. It is preferable to attach the hot sticks to the clamp star while on the ground and for two linemen to hold the clamp star while in the bucket moving up to the repair location. The two linemen will raise the clamp star together, placing it on the conductor on either side of the suspension clamp. Then, a few nuts will be tightened to hold it in place on one side, while the other end of the clamp star is held in position. All clamp nuts should then be tightened to secure it to the conductor. This particular installation is much easier to accomplish with a third lineman tightening the nuts from above. Using a universal stick with a deep well socket, simply tighten the nuts. All nuts should be snugged up first and then the tether, if one is being used, is secured then follow up with a second pass to get moderately tight in sequence and a third pass to snap off the torque nuts. This is of particular importance on larger units with three or more layers of aluminum stranding. A hydraulic nut driver with an extension stick will substantially reduce overall installation time. Once the clamp star is secure, it's time to finish attaching the tether. Simply grab one end with a hot stick and guide it through the clamp's opening. Using electrical tape to secure the nut to the universal stick is a quick and easy way to accomplish this task. Once the nut is started on the bolt, just remove the tape and finish the job and be sure to go back and wring off the torque nuts. All clamp stars are supplied by the factory with pre-installed torque limiting nuts containing a top section that is designed to snap off when the correct torque level is reached. 25 foot-pounds for the smallest clamp star, CSR0325, with 3 8 hardware, and 40 to 45 foot-pounds for larger clamp stars with half-inch hardware. Completed installation with tether. Because of the almost endless variety of hardware configurations, special brackets may need to be provided for some installations. It will likely be necessary to consult a factory for such special applications. Adherence to proper safety procedures for live line maintenance must be followed to the letter. Because some clamp star installations will be performed on connectors approaching the end of their life, precautions should be taken to assure that the splice will not fail during the installation procedure if performed on an energized line. Connectors observed operating above 165 degrees C or a delta temperature exceeding 50 degrees C above that of the conductor should be worked during a low load cycle when the temperature is much less or during a scheduled outage. While these are general guidelines, no standards exist today to provide more concise recommendations and the individual utility safety standards and recommended practices should take precedence.